Monday rears its ugly head again. But that also means it's time for Sunrise Cereals. Hi, I'm your host, Richard Pochart, and today we continue the adventure and the romance of Junior G-Men, starring the Dead End Kids. Now, he may not be a Dead End Kid, not even a little tough guy, but Harry Trent is portrayed by Kenneth Howell is every inch a junior G-Man. Born in Los Angeles in 1913, Howell began his career at age 20, playing the teenage romantic rival to Junior Coughlin, who we just saw as Billy Batson, in a series of short subjects. When the series ended, he played a number of small supporting roles until 1936, when he was tapped to play Jack Jones, eldest son in the Jones family, a feature film that spawned 15 sequels over the next five years. After Junior G-Men, he co-starred in Pride of the Bowery with the East Side Kids, a tough kid ensemble that would eventually absorb the Dead End Kids. He married in 1942 and joined the Navy Medical Corps for World War II. After the war, he realized he was gay and divorced his wife and became estranged from his daughter. He only appeared in two movies after that, and then I could not find any more information about him until his daughter reached out to him by phone in 1963. They never got together in person, though, and in 1966, he shot himself. Not a happy ending to his life, but let's watch him at the height of his youthful exuberance in Chapter 7, Flaming Death. I'm ready. Uncle Jim! Uncle Jim, the torch gang There's going to be a... What do you call it? Where everything goes... Come on, time for that one. Come on. Whee! It's just like one stock. Anybody hurt? You all right? You all right, Harry? Oh, really? Yeah, too close for Come on, let's go up. Just see what's up there. I could have sworn there was a road here a minute ago. I sure thought you fellas were corners. We thought so, too. We better find the other boys and see if we can get a line on the torch gang. The torch had my father with them. That's right. It was the power of your father's invention that set off that blast. You don't mean my father. Willingly, Billy. Torch gang forced him to do it. I hope Chip and the other kids have it something. We'll soon find out. Come on. Good guys, stand by. 
But we want to get in the... Okay, fine. We'll just wait here then. They're not coming back, are they? You told me there were no other explosives within miles of this place. Of course we did, Colonel Barton. Otherwise, we couldn't have persuaded you to demonstrate your invention here. But that must have been an arsenal. With guards and workmen in it. And you murdered them. Get back. Your explosive is everything you claimed it to be. All right, back up and let's get out of here. Hey, they're going to make a getaway in their car. Hey, can I ride in the front seat this time? I'm a regular Jim Bowie. They won't get far. I punched a hole in one of them tires. Hey, maybe you ought to trail them in Harry's car. Huh? We gotta see what happened to Billy first. Yeah, and Harry. Be a jolly love. Stop worrying about Harry, will you? Come on. Well, time to get a flat. Keep going. We'll make the change and catch you. Keep your radio on 1.8. And remember to answer the phone. WKRZ is going to make me rich. Looks like it's been cut. How could it be? Search me. Here's the jack. I can't find the lug wrench. Try this. That's no good for a quick job. Well, I'll stop with it anyhow until I find the other. All right. Now that you boys are recognized a member of the Torch Gang, it'll help us greatly in trailing them. That gang will try to blow up a report and arsenal in this country. Yeah, and plus... Here's the lug wrench. It's about time you found it. Blasted for sure, Bill. Did the torch gang clear out? Yeah, but they won't get far. Why not? I knifed one of them. Knifed them? Ah, uh, knifed one of their tires. Which way'd they go? Ah, uh, they went that way. <sighs> Car follow them. Come on, come on, come on. Junior G men to the rescue! Always starting forest like fires. Here. Right, the gang probably stopped to change that tire Jim mentioned. Well, we can't be far ahead. Let's go. Here come the kids. We better ditch them, Jim. There's lively gunplay. I'll fix them. What's wrong? What's your stock? I think the men were after changed the tire here. Look around, see if you can find some evidence. Oh, gee, we want. Okay, Uncle Jim. What kind of evidence is he looking for? Evidence that might establish the identity of those men. I know them. Only by sight. We don't know their name. Come on, let's get busy. Huh? Hey, what do you got? Don't touch it. Why not? You'll smear the fingerprints on it. And they may give us the lead we're looking for. Don't you smear the fingerprints on that wrench by handling it? Not with this handkerchief covering it. All right, all right. There's fingerprints on it. So what? Well, by scientific deduction, we may get a line on that game. What are you going to do with it? Turn it over to the G-man? Listen, if you're so smart about your reduction stuff... Why don't, you, why don't you handle it yourself? Yeah, sure. We're all going to be junior G-men now, Harry. Look, you work it out yourself. We'll watch and get wise to height. Okay, Billy. I'll develop those prints myself. Let's go. I'll print an 8x10, two 5x7s, and a whole bunch of wallet size. It's Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. What's wrong with this bus? Maybe whoever slipped that tire did something with any. I believe that car back there is tailing us. It keeps the same distance behind us all the time. Well, that's just safe driving skills. Turn off the next dirt road. Oh, 
Ron Howard pops the clutch and tells the world to eat my dust. Oh, we're tailing them. They're trying to lose us in the dust. Right no, it's a car, a not a bus. Keep his radio tuned in on 1.8. Severin, call him faster. Yeah, okay. We gotta wait for the other car. Well, uh, what's up now? Search me, it's orders from Severin. Come on, back it out of here. We gotta get that gang. Face it, guys, this car is shot. get invited to the barbecue. Not a chance. They know all the tricks. You better report this to the fire warden. Come on, Duke. Keep your eyes open. We were home. Yes, sir. He always makes us unpack the luggage. Well, did you have any trouble? Somebody got in our trail, but we lost them. One of the experiments. A great success. Martin's explosive is all he claims it to be. Good. That he prepares more of it at once. That We're having a dinner party tomorrow night. Martin knows we tricked him into destroying that arsenal. It's too bad, but it had to be done. I suppose we'll be hearing from our friend, the foreign agent, about the loss of his ammunition and explosives. Well, I can take care of him. But you'd better warn our neighborhood organizations to stand by in case of emergency. Good idea. This case worries me. I keep feeling we've overlooked that somewhere. Yes. You again! I told you in Chapter 1 not to interrupt. If he's found something important, why didn't he bring it up here? That's what I'd like to know. Come on, Duke. Now I'll brush it with this powder. Watch the prints come out. Gee, that's great stuff. Well, that certainly puts a finger on the crook, doesn't it? Well, we know these prints belong to a member of the Torch Gang. He's got a record. We'll soon learn who he is. Yeah, but how are you going to find out? We'll take a picture of the prints. So we're going to make a print of the print? Come in. I want to show you something. Come on. Oh, boys, no, just like Violet. Eh, hey, what do you know about Violet? I had a girl by the name of Violet once. So what? Uh, you had a lot of girls with a lot of names. Boy, this is a swell smell. Wow, he's really smoking. I'll take two more shots. Yeah, go on, go on. Boy, well, I want them on to turn out. How long does it take to develop them? Uh, Harry, I want to talk to you. You know better than to keep important evidence from me. Well, I'm sorry, Uncle Jim, but we found this wrench with a torch gang changed the tire. Look at that swell print on it. Hey, that's fine. I came here to ball you boys out, but you've done as well with this wrench as we could ourselves. Sure we have. We ain't so dumb. 
You know, while you're set up, you may as well get a couple of more shots. Hey, what are these pictures going to get you? Yeah, as much as a dollar ninety nine on the open market. Ah, oh, how are you going to do that? Well, it's like this, Billy. We send the photographs of the prints to our headquarters in Washington, D.C. They'll be compared with those on record. If the man whose prints they are has ever been fingerprinted, we'll know who he is. In spite of the millions of cards, it'll take less than three minutes to find the one we want, if it's there. Then headquarters will notify us. This is this going to be on the test? Harry, thanks. Corey served time in three states on felony charges. Is present on parole. Reportedly once associated with Zeno Ponzetti. Well, that's the big shot con man they never caught. Yeah. That gives me an idea that Ponzetti is... Oh, yeah? What's the big idea? He always did have big ideas. Here's Corey's last known address. Probably still correct as he's on parole. Arrange the usual routine and get all the possible information about him. What's your next move? Well, I promised Billy and Harry I'd tell them who this fellow is. They want it for their records. What for? They'll only go looking for him and gun us up again. I don't think they will. I've got a hunch that they're going to help us out. Are you still betting out with your old man with those torches? I'm sure it was. Come on, don't you think I know my own father? You ain't seen your old man for five years. All right, they called him Colonel Barton, didn't they? So what? So there's a lot of Colonel Barton. You're crazy. Hey, where'd you get those tailor-made cigarettes? I picked them up from the tailor. Where else? What's the idea? That's evidence, you sap. Didn't you hear what Harry said? Don't tell me they're going to get fingerprints off them things. I'm not letting nothing slip by them. Give us a line on those torches. You guys wait here till I get back. Well, boys, I have some good news for you. What is it? Thanks for Harry's alertness and picking up those prints. We've got a line on one of the members of the torch gang. Now, if I give you his name and address for your records, will you promise to stay away from there until I give you the word to go? Sure, I promise. Only if you let us right, cross our fingers is. while we do Al it. Corey, 215 5th Street. Look, we'll round up the gang, sneak up on that guy Corey tonight, beat him up, make him tell us where my father is. Come on, let's start. is in the middle of this block. You guys wait here till I find out what flat Corey lives in. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hey. hey. All right, let's have the report on Corey. Well, here it is. Corey has no family. He lives in the top flat and the rent's paid up. He hasn't been around for a while, but keeps the flat up and just drops in occasionally. Is that all? Yeah. I didn't want to get too nosy. The landlady likes him and might tip him off. Besides, she was making me we'll ill. Here, I had a big agents, lunch. Check the pool room cafe. Come on in. I don't think I should. Ah, uh, come on. I got something up there I've been saving for a homecoming. Brad told me to get this explosive stuff to number seven. They might need it. Oh, they're not in that much of a hurry. Come on in. Well, okay, but just for a minute. Hey, what are you up? It's the Barton kid. This is Lord. What are you doing here? I ain't talking to you. What are you, are you doing? doing? You ought to be with your father. He misses you. Get out of car. I'll try to stop him. Hey, it's Billy!
good of detectives as the boys may be, they also need the guidance of a professional. And we'll look at him tomorrow. Meanwhile, let me know how I'm doing in the comments. And if you like today's show, give it a thumbs up. I could sure use the encouragement. Is Bradford becoming a fire magnet? Or are the torches finally living up to their name? Does Billy Barton have asbestos underwear? Come back tomorrow for Chapter 8, Hurled Through Space. Hope to see you then. Hey everybody, it's Richard again, and if this is the first time you're viewing my series, you've already missed a lot. So why not subscribe, and that way you'll never miss another exciting cliffhanging moment. Subscribe today!